The 64-year-old Scotchbluff man caught driving on a suspended license is now facing serious drug charges. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, Gearing officers pulled over Jose Rosado on Thursday for driving on a suspended driver's license. And then officers noticed a baggie containing a crystalline substance and conducted a search of the vehicle. Officers ultimately found 32.3 grams of suspected methamphetamine, 18 fentanyl pills, and a small amount of marijuana. Rosado was arrested on charges, including possession of methamphetamine between 28 and 139 grams and distribution of an exceptionally hazardous drug. He was arraigned on the felony charges on Friday in Scottsdale County Court. Well, Scottsdale Police continue their investigation into an apparent shooting Friday night. According to a release from the Scottsdale Police Department, officers were called to the emergency room at Rachel West shortly after 9 p.m. regarding a 33-year-old female being treated for a gunshot wound. Investigators learned the shooting took place in Scottsbluff and the victim was transported to the hospital by a family member. The victim was treated for her injuries and released that same night. And as last report, no arrests have been made. More news right after this. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether it is building, buying, or renovating, we have the home loan or home equity line of credit to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. May is Beef Month, a time to celebrate the high quality beef products that are raised by farmers and ranchers right here in Nebraska. With over 5 million cattle fed and marketed each year, Nebraska is the number one cattle feeding state in the country. From steaks and roasts to ground beef and kebabs, Nebraska's beef producers take pride in raising safe, wholesome products that end up on dinner plates around the world. Join the beef community by celebrating Beef Month with your favorite beef meal tonight. Beef, it's what's for dinner in Nebraska. Sponsored by Frank Parts, Marker Ag, and Runza Restaurants. Interested community members are invited to attend one of three town hall meetings this month to learn more about the proposed Scottsbluff Aquatic Center and to provide public input. Co-chair Zach Karpf of the Vote Yes for the Scottsbluff Aquatic Citizen Committee says about 1,000 responses were received in a survey conducted back in March. We're still in that information gathering phase because we think with a specific design like this where it's not just infrastructure for example, we need to really dial in on what the community wants and what they want to see and then get that back to them in this August and September time frame so that they know what they're voting yes for. The town halls take place in the Scottsdale High School boardroom on May 23rd at 6 p.m. and again at noon and 6 p.m. on May 31st. All meetings will be live streamed via Facebook and YouTube and you can visit scottsbluffaquatics.com for more details. Well, the state of Nebraska has agreed to pay $479,000 to the family of a talkative Scotsdale man who was strangled to death in 2017 by a fellow inmate who didn't want a cellmate. The lawsuit filed by Terry Berry Jr.'s family against prison officials argued that they were responsible for the 22-year-old's death because they put him in the same cell as Patrick Schroeder was dismissed last week after both sides agreed to the settlement. Barry Jr. was nearing parole when he was placed with Schroeder, who was serving a life sentence for killing a 75-year-old man. Schroeder later pleaded guilty to killing Barry and was sentenced to death. 
And a 53-year-old man from Rural Mitchell has been sentenced to prison on a firearms conviction. Convicted felon Robert Ryan was arrested in December after troopers found him with a crossbow and black powder rifle in his vehicle at Lake Minotaur. In March, he pleaded guilty to the Class 1D felony charge of possession of a firearm by a prohibited person. And earlier this month in district court, he was sentenced to three years in prison. Ryan received credit for 145 days already served. KNEB.TV News will be back right after the break. A community is connections, friends, family, schools, teams. At Allo, we're honored to be a part of your community. As members of the community, we're committed to ensuring people stay connected to the services they need. That's why we're participating in the FCC's Affordable Connectivity Program. We're providing discounts on any internet service option with Allo to qualifying households. Go to allofiber.com forward slash ACP to learn more. The Verizon family is full of frowns because they're spending too much for their unlimited data and phones, while the Viero family is all smiles because they're getting four lines of unlimited data with two free Apple iPhone SE for mom and dad and two free LG K31 smartphones for the kids, all for just $100 a month. They're saving so much, they're able to get Fido. Find out how you can too at Viero.com or your nearest Viero store. Viero Wireless, keeping you connected. This is KNEB.TV Weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. Well, a few isolated thunderstorms are going to be around early this evening. Those will clear out, though, and we're going to be left with uh, partly to mostly cloudy skies overnight, turning mostly sunny as we get into the early morning hours tomorrow and temperatures that are going to warm up again tomorrow. Night across the area, scattered storms or at least isolated, will develop again tomorrow. And then a big cold front arrives Thursday as it turns sharply colder and windy again. Yesterday we hit 75 after a morning low of 45. Nothing in the rain gauge. We're now right at normal basically for the month and about an inch and a half for the year. We did have some improvement in our drought monitor conditions. You'll notice there's actually some areas that are out of the initially uh, just listed as abnormally dry. That's going to be areas here of southeastern uh, Wyoming, portions of Platte and Goshen counties. Those areas now are listed as abnormally dry. The rest of us in a moderate drought in the severe drought off to the southeast of us. But again, some improvement here locally, at least, in terms of conditions. So that is certainly some good news, and hopefully that uh, continues. We can find some more moisture out there. We've got 80s out in front of this system. It's uh, pretty mild to here across the region. 85 in Valentine, 80 in Lusk. It's 72 right now in Cheyenne. A little bit of a rain-cooled area air in this portion of southeastern Wyoming. And you can see the winds associated with some of those storms as well. Uh, gusty at times, for the most part, under 10-mile-an-hour winds today. Severe weather threat tonight is off to our south primarily. We have a marginal risk of some severe thunderstorms here in the area. Again, tomorrow as well, slight risk extends just a little further to our southeast. Tomorrow, a few more storms than today, and then on into Wednesday, the severe threat to our south. So tonight, we see those clouds push through, a few light showers and thunderstorms rumbling across the area. They're gonna be very isolated and few and far between. As we take a look at overnight lows tonight, we're going to dip down into the 40s to near 50 degrees, a very comfortable night. Tomorrow, we're going to see uh, mostly sunny skies to start the day. Clouds increase throughout the day, and we'll be dealing with a few stray afternoon showers and thunderstorms on an isolated basis, and we're going to see uh, those move off to the east and clearing skies again tomorrow night into early Wednesday morning. Highs are going to be varied tomorrow, only in the 60s around Lusk, 80s in Ogallala, somewhere in between most of us in the 70s tomorrow. And uh, precip amounts right now look pretty light. Again, you can get under one of those heavier showers, maybe end up with a tenth of an inch or so. Uh, most of us are going to see very light amounts of precip, uh, a trace at best. 51 overnight with a stray shower or thunderstorm, otherwise partly cloudy skies as winds switch to the north. Tomorrow, north-northwesterly winds at about 10 to 20, some isolated late-day storms. A little cooler than today, still pretty comfortable, though, in the 70s. Back into the 80s for both Wednesday and Thursday, and then highlight this day here. 
Thursday afternoon, this 83-degree high going to be in the morning. Notice what happens by Thursday night into Friday. We're down to near 40 degrees, maybe only warming up to near 50. We could be back down into frost territory again Friday night into early Saturday morning, and then we slowly climb out to end the weekend into early next week. But certainly sharply colder temperatures coming for Friday and uh, Friday night into early Saturday and some windy conditions there as well. You can't rule out a little bit of light precip. Chances are pretty slim, though. This is John. He's not an actor or a director, can you tell? He calls himself a steward of the land. And by the looks of the way he nurtures his little corner of the earth, it's safe to say he's the real deal. John runs with us on a John Deere 3 Series tractor because you can never underestimate the value of a little tractor time. Nothing runs like a deer. Visit 21st Century Equipment in Alliance, Torrington, Scottsbluff, and Bridgeport, or visit 21stCenturyEquipment.com. Sports from the FNBO Sports Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. This will be a quick update from the Sports Desk here for the start of the new work week. Boys District golf meets are taking place today around the state. B, C, and D schools from the region all scattered about next week. The Boys Class B State Golf Tournament, that'll be right here in Scott's Bluff, a two-day event at the Scott's Bluff Country Club. We'll recap districts, though, coming up tomorrow with results on the website and on air. State competitions continue this week. Class B track and field at Burke Stadium in Omaha. That'll be on Wednesday and Thursday. Class C and D kids, they'll be competing in Omaha for state track on Friday and Saturday. And also girls tennis at the Woods Center in Lincoln late this week. Of course, the Scotts Bluff boys soccer team knocked out in round one. That boys Class B final. Class B wraps up tomorrow. It'll be Lexington playing Scott Catholic. And in baseball yesterday, the West Coast Zephyrs closed out a tough week with a pair of losses to Cheyenne Power Post 6. In the shutout defeats, the Z's collected a total of just three base hits in the two games. After three straight wins to start the year, Wesco has dropped their last five games. The two yesterday, a doubleheader at Casper on Saturday, and they lost last Tuesday at Douglas. They'll host Shadron coming up on Friday. Gearing will open their Legion season next Tuesday. And for the Western Nebraska Pioneers, they'll open next Tuesday as well. They'll be on the road at North Platte. And then the home opener a week from Friday. That is the latest for today from right here at the FNBO Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. Are you looking for the perfect place to hold a wedding, family reunion, holiday office party, or business meeting? Well, look no further. The Hampton Inn and Suites Hotel and Conference Center is just the place for you. We're a full-service banquet facility that can host up to 400 of your guests. Stop in and see our spacious open concept meeting rooms and begin planning your special event or family gathering today. Let us do the work for you so you can enjoy your guests. For personal service, stop by the Hampton Inn and Suites front desk. Let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar.
The Community Calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. First State Bank is now Riverstone Bank. Community strong with the same people you know and trust. Fly United Airlines operated by SkyWest with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. United is dedicated to going the extra mile for you with daily flights to and from Denver along with a commitment to excellent service. Reserve your flight today and remember United miles can be earned and redeemed with your flights. While at the airport, stop and enjoy authentic Italian food at Roma Italian Restaurant. Plus, Hertz Thrifty Car Rental is there for your car rental needs. Make life easier, relax, and get on board with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether you are just starting the business you have always imagined or looking to grow your existing one, we have a business loan to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. And finally tonight, on Thursday, the 86th Runs a Restaurant opened for business in Alliance at the intersection of Highway 385 and Highway 2. Neil and Laura Blumenkamp are the franchisees, and their son Tanner is the general manager. The Blumenkamps also own a Runs a Restaurant location in Shadron, Gehring, and Scotts Bluff. The Alliance store employs nearly 30 staff members, and Neil Blumenkamp says Alliance is a thriving community and he's pleased to be part of the growth. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time. <laughs>